Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the correct views. Sam I. B. DeGange reporting, or I guess political commentary for the media speaks. Really not reporting. Um, letting you know what's going on in the world, and that's important. And that's important today, and I'm going to tell you why. Because there's going to be two distinct kinds of people coming to see the show. And I don't mean separating the way uh, leftists like to do. That's not what I mean at all. I mean in terms of what people are going to believe. And uh, welcome aboard, by the way. Uh, Fact Cam behind us, a crystal on the high def, zooming in and out. Let us know how you like it. Obviously, it needs to go up. Low def people, uh, live listeners, um, it's not going to affect you as much. But Fact Cam, all of my... uh, of my sources are on the screen. I'm going to have two distinct kinds of people here, as I was saying before I interrupted myself. Um, Christians, welcome aboard. And those who are anything but Christian, welcome aboard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you my commentary. Um, first for the Christian, and then for the non-Christian. Why? I'll tell you why. There's a lot of sp- Spirituality tied into a lot of this. Um, I'm not going to get into CERN. If you want to hear about CERN, I talk about it for like an hour on the Media Speaks. And please go. It's getting like mad traffic and it's some of our best work. Uh, The Media Speaks, CERN, you'll find it right away. Um, Some people have said that they are opening up holes to other dimensions. Some people have said it could be the bottomless pit. It happens on the 26th. Other people have said, no, it's simply science. The black hole cannot possibly spread because it's on much too small of an arena. Okay. So I report on it, and I give you both sides of it. So for my Christian friends, and I am Christian, but the way I'm doing this isn't going to affect you any. I also listen to death metal. I swear like a sailor. Um, I'm a really rotten Christian. I'm terrible. I suck, okay? I really do. But it doesn't matter. What matters is you're going to get the facts, and then you're going to get the insight in ways that it matters to those who are of faith. But no matter how you look at it, things always go bad during the... I've heard Shemta, Shemta. I'm not Jewish, um, but I don't know how how they say it. But it is, in fact, always in line with the Day of Atonement. And every... It happens every seven years. You can find stock stock market crashes, for instance, are always within a week or two of Shemta. Now, some people have said that that's because Jews control everything. I, I'm not in the blame the Jews camp. I think there's plenty of blame to go around for everyone, Jews included. Um, my issue more is, let's pretend I wasn't a Christian. And Shemta rolls around. I'm not Jewish. But I'm able to tell you quite clearly that someone obviously is believing in this. So I would argue if our leaders are Illuminatists or Freemasons or Jews, if you will, then don't you think you should know this religious significance of it since your controllers, your leaders are clearly unless it's the biggest coincidence ever, sticking to a certain schedule. So we'll go into it this way. Those of you that don't believe in God, it every, every seven years, starting today, which is why I'm posting on a Tuesday, which never happens, starting today, that amazing coincidence is about to happen again. So stay with me, no matter what faith you are, let me get to both the atheist and the Christian, because this is going to affect all of you. And again, I'm not saying I'm a respecter of dates. I'm not a respecter of time periods like that. But what I'm saying is it's very clear that something is going on here, and we are in that time period again. Um, Michael Snyder, over the past, end of the American dream, over the past year or so, There has been an unprecedented amount of buzz on the internet about the month of September 2015. And all of the days during that month, no date has gotten more attention than the date of September 23rd. So precisely what will happen on September 23rd, 2015, that is today. And again, if if you're watching this after the 23rd, don't don't like go into Spaceville because a lot of these predictions are saying that they start on the 23rd. 
It says, do you know that this is Yom Kippur, the most solemn of the festival days that we find in the scriptures? September 23rd is also the last day of the summer, as I get defeated by my headset. And I have discussed previously, it is when Pope Francis will be arriving to the White House. Now let's pause. He's going to meet Barack Obama. I love how they write that, as if he's going to go meet Santa Claus. Yes, he's going to meet Barack Obama. And... Having said I'm Christian, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go ahead and judge another man. I'm the worst person to do that. But I don't like this Pope as a personal don't like him. It's a very one world order. It seems to be the kinds of things we've been warned about as Christians for a very long time. I'm not a fan of this Pope. Uh, I, I don't want anybody to hurt him. I know they've had security detail. No, the correct views did not say go and harm the Pope. Um, you can protest him if you want to, but do not harm the Pope. Other than that, it says, I do not know of any specific major event that either will or will not happen on that day, writes Michael Snyder, but I do believe that September 23rd is going to be extremely significant. And again, he says that uh, he thinks, the, in his opinion, that the reason we're being judged is because of things like the Planned Parenthood, where they were aborting live babies and cutting their faces off. Um, no matter what side of the aisle you are, and you would think that's pretty disgusting, um, whether you are Christian or not Christian, what they're, the, the way they did it was clearly, if you're Christian, if you believe that uh, abortion is wrong, then they were cutting up live babies. If you are pro-choice, what they did you're libertarian or you probably wouldn't have found this show if you're libertarian then you don't think the government needs to be paying for things but if they are going to pay for it then they sign a contract so you could take morality out of it Planned Parenthood lied on their contract when they received taxpayer dollars so you don't have to be um, Christian to get it see where we're going with this show no matter how you look at it it was wrong um, what else have we done well, it says a small minority of Americans are angry about Planned Parenthood, but most of them haven't been alarmed. But it says that there are days of awe coming. Since the days of Moses, the period of time that stretches from Rosh Hashanah, I can speak, to Yom Kippur has been a period of repentance. That is something that happens every year. Well, guess what? The period of repentance just ended today. And it says he believes it has extra significance this year. On September 23rd, this period of repentance, of course, comes to an end, and something unusual will happen on that day or shortly thereafter, he asks. September 23rd has been popping up forever. Um, there's been warnings all over. Let me go to this room. I'm going to load this up in the... I forgot we got fact cam here. Um, it seems like quite a coincidence that uh, nothing else, our leaders have it coming up everywhere. Look at this. Um, New York resumes trading 3.5 hours after halt hit the video. There's a warning about how that coincides with the number. What number? All the 923s that they're putting in your face. Again, I'm not saying this is um, because everybody's a numerologist. I'm saying that our media is controlled, this, it's fact, by the way, by about 50 to 500 people, depending on how you consider ownership. These people are putting these numbers right in front of us. September 23rd, 2015, the day of convergence. You're seeing it all over. Again, go to this article if you want to. It's uh, End of the American Dream, Mystery of the September 23rd. He goes into all the other coincidences. But um, according to Mina Lee Grieben, she says starting on, and again, I'm not saying that this is going to happen. I'm reporting what I am seeing here because there's been a lot of Christians who have predicted the end of the world and been wrong. Um, is this woman right? Well, she's not predicting the end of the world, so that's not what I'm saying. But I'm not saying she's right, but I'm saying if she believes it and our leaders are putting these numbers in front of us, like I just said, you can't say it's just some crackpot religious person that's saying it because it's not. You've got it coming up in the media again and again and again. And you can't say it's just the media and religious people don't believe it because clearly some religious people do. So what are they saying? Starting on January 2015, the Lord told Mina multiple times that these things would happen this year. He told her she needed to stock up on food and send an angel to visit her. And, her, and he talks about uh, 
showing her a countdown that was going too quickly for her to read. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but do look that up. Um, after the visit, Mina Lee Grieben and her husband rushed out and finished stocking up on food supplies. Um, supposedly, the Lord told her to stock up on food supplies for a year. Now, if you don't believe in the Lord, it does seem very coincidental that a bunch of people in Hollywood have made all these ads that keep pointing to that day and a re religious zealot, if you will, if that's what you want to call her, happens to notice these numbers too. You don't have to believe in numbers. You only have to know that other people believe in numbers and you want to keep track of them because they like to do things like this. And a quick glance at numerology through history will tell you. And again, I'm not a numerologist. I think it's BS. But if other people adhere to it, then that's important if those other people are your leaders. You with me? Um, not too long ago, Dr. Patricia Green was told the day when Barack Obama meets with Pope Francis is a very, very important deadline. Um, this is an excerpt from what she was recently saying. September 23rd is the day that he makes a pact with the devil. It was not by chance that the Pope and Obama are meeting on the Day of Atonement. <coughs> They will make a pact that will seal the fate of the United States. My vengeance will be poured upon from this point forward. There is no turning back. This is from what she believes that she was told. Third woman said that September 23rd is extremely significant. Her name is Sister Barbara, and she's been predicting the same day since 2012. She's on record. Um, she was told to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord would be 1,350 days from the dream. Her accountant husband told her that would be the Day of Atonement, oddly enough, on 2015. For almost four years, she has obeyed the Lord, proclaiming the words that the United States. She concludes that each of her videos, she says this, I am proclaiming the acceptable year of the Lord until September 23, 2015, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. After September 23rd, she will no longer be proclaiming the acceptable year of the Lord. So she's staking her entire career on it. Let me ask you something. If you've got so this number coming up again and again and again and again, you're going to want to look into it for religious reasons. And you're going to want to look into it in terms of what has happened on these days before. Because I guarantee when 9-11 happened, there were a lot of people that didn't follow numerology. And unfortunately, other people did. And guess what? They burnt to death. So maybe this video is that kind of important. Keep an eye on this. They've, they've been harping this forever. And uh, anytime you've got this thing harped at again and again and again, and isn't it amazing how it just, oh, it happens within days of uh, when they said it would. This is from uh, EAG News. Students revolt after pre uh, professor bans God bless you in class. Now, the reason I'm mentioning this is there's a lot of people listening to this. A lot of my death metal loving friends. And guess what? I love it too. Um, a lot of you that hate Christianity are saying, I think that's awesome. Don't you realize that if someone cannot speak freely of God in class then you will not be allowed to speak freely about something else in class. It's a slippery slope. Um, I hope nobody puts in my video, Sam, this is the worst political commentary here at 420 in the morning that I have ever heard. You suck. Hopefully that doesn't happen. It might. It has. Um, that's, you won't be allowed to say that unless other people stand up for your right to say it. Sooner or later, it becomes a fact where nobody gets to speak at all, and you're in a place like China, or you're in a place like North Korea, or you're in one of the other hell holes in the world that are even further down this rabbit hole than we are. So, it matters. Edinburgh, Texas. An unidentified professor at the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley removed a directive in his class syllabus asking students to refrain from saying God bless you after the document sparked outrage. So there's two ways to, ways to look at it. Thankfully, the students did in fact stand up for God, which is interesting because um, lately that hasn't been the direction. Uh, students at the university posted an image of a class syllabus to social media last week that specifically asked students to please refrain from saying God bless you during classes and exams. 
Well, yeah, you know, you can't say it in class, but you can say it during the exam. No, you can't even pray before your exam. No, go to hell. The new site reports images of the syllabus posted online, reviewed by thousands, and drew scorn from many who believe the ban on God bless you infringes on their religious and free speech rights outlined in the Constitution. It's kind of ridiculous. First Amendment, freedom of religion, it's there. We shouldn't have to block that out of school, student Marcos Velarela said. You shouldn't have a boundary on what you believe, especially in the classroom, student John Taylor added. I wouldn't. I would have not said anything, but it would have bothered me because as a common courtesy, I say God bless you to people who sneeze. And again, how many of you know it goes back to the, uh, the fact that your heart stops when you sneeze? At least uh, that's where the, the uh, God bless you came from. University officials, it says, wouldn't discuss the syllabus on camera, but did provide a statement that essentially backs the professor's authority to ban what he deems necessary. It could be disruptive behavior, like a cell phone. Yeah, God bless you when someone sneezes. It's like playing a video game on your cell phone. That's like saying a pumpkin is like a gold bar. It makes no sense. Um, again, ban God, ban anything to do with God, get God out of the classroom. But I guarantee you, if, uh, if any other religion that wasn't Christianity was in the classroom, it would be fine. And again, that's, that's our country. In other countries... Um, it's that way with Muslims. You, you, you have to be Muslim or you're, you're punished. And again, that's not a good idea either. Because what you end up with is, uh, at some point, insanity. You can't force someone into a religious system. You can teach them and guide them, but you can't force someone to believe anything. And that's the problem no matter which direction you take it in. Um, I'm going on about the uh, calling it the evil show. You don't have to believe in God or the devil to wonder what the hell this is. Illinois trooper guilty of assault after roadside strip of strip search of motorist. There, here's a picture of the here fact cam from Sputnik. We have, and this isn't the only story, law enforcement pulling people over and attacking them with needles to draw blood by force in this country. What happened to protected from uh, searches and seizures? You don't know who a hemophiliac is. It's not up to you to go drawing blood out of people. Why? It's, it's, it's what America's supposed to be about. You can't. You can't take something that far. I would argue breathalyzers are too far, but certainly needles. You've got people putting their fingers inside of another person's body in parking lots on the side of the road. And you mean to tell me evil doesn't exist? And if you're someone that doesn't believe evil exists, then that's fine. As uh, Christelle White balances the high def. Um, of course. Yeah, no, evil doesn't exist. Then fine. Don't you care about the Fourth Amendment even if you don't believe in it? I'm serious. Illinois State Trooper Corey Alberson, who originally faced a felony charge of aggravated robbery, has been found guilty of a lesser assault charge after a roadside strip search incident which was captured on his patrol car's dashboard camera. Troopers Corey Alberson and Chris Courier stopped Anthony Campbell after they received an informant's tip that the car had the same color as the one Campbell was driving was transporting drugs. So now by being in a car that looks like someone else's car is reason to strip search someone? That, that's, that's, your, that's your new crime? Do you know how many cars look alike in poor neighborhoods for that matter? When the initial search left Alberson empty-handed, he pulled down Campbell's pants without the man's consent to inspect his buttocks and genitals with a flashlight. Strip searching is illegal unless a person is arrested and suspected of carrying drugs or weapons or has been conducted in private is approved. No, now we do it on the side of the road. And that's what I'm talking about in this country. Um, let me go into this. Look, here, we're, we're, it's 58 seconds of it. Uh, I'd like to, I, I wish to invoke my right for uh, video for purposes of commentary. You have to say that now. Um, look, right here. On the side of the road, and there's no obviously no um um no audio here. It's a dash cam from a cop. Look at this. What is this? 
absolute insanity is what this is. This is like Nazi Germany. This is the kind of things we saw right before everything went really bad. I'm not saying we're as bad as Nazi Germany now. I'm saying we saw this. This is what we saw. What? Mind-blowing. We just go along with this as if, oh, it's fine. We thought he had drugs so we can put our hands anywhere we want to. How long, how far away is it until that ends up, what, what line is it assault? Uh, what line is it not okay because you're a cop? That's the question. Um, Paul Joseph Watson here. German media covering up rapes committed by Muslim immigrants. Now, I'm, this isn't an anti-Muslim rant here because there are a lot of good Muslims in the world. And you can make the argument that there's some really crappy Christians like the Westboro Baptists. Fair enough. However... The Westboro Baptists, and uh, for those of you on high def, this uh, graphics are new, so if you keep seeing her white balance, it is new, new technology to learn. Um, you've got a very large number of Muslim extremists, and the Westboro Baptist Church are offending people. The insane Islamists are beheading and raping people. Well... If a Christian goes to a Muslim extremist-led country, such as Saudi Arabia, and they offend Muslims, what happens? The Christian dies. That's what happens. The Christian dies. If the extreme Muslim comes to a Christian nation and rapes a woman, the Western nation will cover it up as to not offend the rapist. Do you understand what I just said to you? If you believe in evil, guess what? We got some evil. If you don't believe in evil, you got a sister, you got a brother, you got anybody that you wouldn't like to see raped. Anybody at all. German media outlets are refusing to broadcast information about rapes committed by Muslims over fears that the hundreds of thousands of migrants flooding into the country might be offended and that such content could inflame tensions. All right. If I was a peaceful Muslim, I would be very upset that you think that getting rid of a rapist is going to make me rape someone. That's kind of what it said, right? I think that's offensive to Muslims. I'll, I'll stand up for the good Muslims there. As we reported last week, numerous prominent welfare organizations in Germany warned that women and children are being raped at a migrant camp in Hessen, but the issue received very little press attention in comparison to the overwhelming positive coverage that was characterized by the media's treatment of the refugee crisis. Um, I'm talking about extremists when I say this. It is interesting for you, uh, my Christian listeners, to, uh, to speculate not only the whole uh, uh, dark pit thing, uh, bottomless pit that could be CERN, but to also note the prevalence of beheading. It's mentioned a couple times in Revelations. And uh, for a long time, many Christians, including myself, thought that it meant otherwise being killed for professing Christianity. Now it looks as if the Bible meant exactly what it said. It said beheading. And it mentions that enemies will swarm in all of the prophecies regarding the way that they're being taken over, the order that the nations are being taken over in, it, in what's happening when they're taken over, what their punishments are, and lastly, the time scale it would take to do it has all lined up to Revelation. Oh, great. Now, now you won't be able to sleep at all tonight, will you? Um... Very interesting. Um, am I saying that Islam is the uh, going to lead to the Antichrist? I, I, I don't think that's fair. I think that's a very broad brush. I do believe ISIS. I do believe extreme Islam. Yes, I do. I think that it's very likely. Am I making that prediction? No. Do I look like a prophet? I'm, I'm not even... I'm a horrible Christian. How can I be a prophet? But I know how to read. It's interesting. It's interesting to note. Again, if you don't believe in it, you think, Sam, the book of Revelation is hogwash. Okay. 
we have somebody that likes to tick, stick to a time scale that's in the Bible. So by studying the Bible, you may be able to head this off. And if you don't believe in God, then you obviously believe that it can be headed off. Bingo. I told you. I told you we were going to cover it all fair here, didn't I? I wouldn't lie to you. I don't want people unsubscribing. As the Gus Stone Institute reports, Germany's top public broadcaster, ZDF, has decided to censor such information. A prime time crime show. Here we go with my language. Great. Aktenventsichen, I think. XY, which seeks public help in identifying criminals, refused to run a segment about a darker-skinned rape suspect. In other words, they're saying it's going to make all Muslims want to rape someone if we report on it. Or they're saying we don't believe in our citizenry enough. We think if we report on this, then every German is going to hate every Muslim. And it's the only two ways to read that. And if that sounds pretty evil to you, then welcome to the evil show. Editor-in-Chief Ina Maria Rees Weirderman explained the decision, remarking, we don't want to inflame the situation and spread the bad mood. The migrants don't deserve it. Now, I love this sentence. One wonders whether Rees Weirderman thinks the future victims of the rapist, who is now more likely to go free, deserve it. German media is now lockstep in with the government, giving happy talk and positive spin on the migrant crisis. Friends, here's the migrant crisis. Do I hate migrants? Am I happy that the little boy died in the water and that millions of women and children aren't eating tonight? That millions of men are laying there with hungry stomachs, don't know how they're going to take care of their family? No, I'm not a prophet and I'm not a nutcase. However, if you have a thousand people go into a country and 10 of them are bad. If your country takes in 10,000, you have 100 people. And if a handful of them are able to have their wherewithal and a little bit of intelligence as to what they're doing, now you've got terrorism. And again, I don't think there's a terrorist behind every rock. I'm a Rand Paul supporter. That's pretty much where I am in terms of spying. But there are some real terrorists in the world, and this opens the door to them. It's not that we hate the dark-skinned Muslim. It's that we don't know who is who. And when they flood over the gates, they cannot be vetted. That is what I'm saying. Friends, we got three more stories left in the evil show. I do want to say real quick, though, that you want to go to Sticker Junkie. Look at them. I love Sticker Junkie. Why do I love them? Because they do stuff like this. Look how good these stickers look. And your stickers, whatever they want them to say, maybe the end is near, your stickers will look like this. Um, also, do me a favor, go to Passing Time on, I look up Passing Time, the Alexandrian Solution. Sam from Passing Time on YouTube, we are playing with Pop Relief itself. And we're going to give you this ticket. If you enter the contest, let us know why you love Passing Time. And right now, Ty will give you a hint. If you might, if you're the first one to leave a comment in the video, there's a real good chance this ticket's yours. All right, friends, brought to you by Mike McLaughlin, M-A-C-M-C-L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N. You can find him on Facebook. He's an amazing writer, poet, and political commentator. Mike McLaughlin brings this to you. Eric Zeus from Washington's blog, U.S. will station new nuclear weapons in Germany against Russia. Hardly a prophet himself. Um, one of the greatest entertainers, however, of our time, Ozzy Osbourne, once referred to on an album, Nuclear War is the Ultimate Sin. And while many people in the world say that that is in fact a Holy Ghost blasphemy, I would argue that Nuclear War is pretty close to it. Um, what are we looking at here? We're looking at the destruction of the meek. Jesus claimed uh, that he loved the meek. Well, this is a destruction of his, of his chosen people. I would argue that the godly are his chosen people, not necessarily the Jews, but those who love God. Um, what you've got here is the ultimate show of power, where the, the, the leaders who can get away to bunkers, the leaders who have islands far away from where most of the fallout hits, they can go after the war 
while the rest of you fester with no water, no food, with cancers and blindness and freezing poison rain and pretty much living in the Stone Ages with 95% mortality rates. You can argue that it's a pretty big sin here. Am I saying that Russia has all the answers? No, I think Putin has been part of the problem, and I've taken my share of hate on comment lines for it. That doesn't mean that I can't see the evil that our country often does, and this is one such episode here. Germany's ZDF Public Television Network headlines on Tuesday, September 22nd, new U.S. atomic weapons to be stationed in Germany, and reports that the U.S. will bring into Germany 20 new nuclear bombs, each being four times the destructive power of the one that was used in Hiroshima. You don't have to be a Christian to realize that that's just bad. You know, that's where the Christians are going, Hey, Sam, um, I think you're a nutcase. I don't believe in God, but <laughs> that's bad. Um, Hans Christensen, the director of the Nuclear Information Project at the Federation of American Scientists, says, With the new bombs, the boundaries blur between tactical and strategic nuclear weapons. A former parliamentary and state secretary in Germany's defense ministry, Willy Wimmer of Chancellor Merkel's own conservative party, the Christian Democratic Union, once warns that these new attack options against Russia constitute a conscience provocation of our Russian neighbors. Again, the Christian Democratic Party wouldn't even have that in this country. It'd be stoned. The Christians would be stoned. Um... In that country, the Christians are saying, hey, you don't provoke your enemy. Ever read the book of Proverbs? Don't provoke your enemy. I, I understand that Putin's pushing it. I understand that we need to be on the ready. But this, we have, I do believe Germany is a nuclear, a nuclear nation. Am I wrong? You mean to tell me we have nobody in Europe that's our ally that has nuclear weapons that we can trust to help us if Russia were to attack us without doing this? I'm sorry, this is a terrible idea. Uh, terrible! German Economic News also reports on Chancellor Merkel's decision to allow these terror weapons against Russia. The, Bl the Bundestag decided in 09 expressing the will of most Germans that the U.S. should withdraw its nuclear weapons from Germany. But German Chancellor Angela Merkel, Merkel did nothing. And now she okays the U.S. to increase America's German-based nuclear arsenal against Russia. First of all, rape isn't a big deal in Germany. You just don't want to offend the extremists. Moving 20 nuclear weapons into the country to point against Russia, though, that's, that's a great idea. Germany has a history of making very bad decisions. I'm not saying Merkel's a Nazi. That's not what I'm saying, so hush on that. But if you realize that non-Nazis did a lot of provoking in World War I. Do you realize they clearly did a lot of provoking in World War II? Do you realize that Angela Merkel has an, another one? Want to take over Europe? No, I'm getting Hitler wanted to take over Europe. I'm not saying Merkel's starting concentration camps or killing Jews, but what I'm saying is it's another German nutcase that wants to take everything over. Who's the head of the European Union? The Germans. Who made a fortune destroying Greece? The Germans. Again, not the, the leaders, not the people. The Germans. Here we go again. Now, now I'm racist against white people, right? It's not about that. Maria Zakharova of the Russian Foreign Ministry says this is an infringement of Articles 1 and 2 of the Treaty of Non-Proliferation non of Nuclear Weapons which is the treaty that provides non-nuclear states the assurance that the existing nuclear powers will not try to use their nuclear status so as to take over the world. Do you understand that Ronald Reagan, talk about a, 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 an amazing uh, speaker, do you realize that Ronald Reagan ended the Cold War by making sure that neither Russia nor America would ever do this to each other again? And along comes Obama. Let me have some poison water down there. I'm dying of thirst, my dear. Christelle, the behind-the-scenes queen. German economic news says the federal government had demanded the exact opposite. The Bundestag decided in March 
2010 by a large majority that the federal government would press for the withdrawal of U.S. nuclear weapons from Germany. Even the coalition agreement between the CDU and FDP, the German government of 2009, had promised a withdrawal of nuclear weapons from Buchel, but instead there will be these new bombs. Now friends, I don't care what religion you are, how, what's it like not knowing if today's going to be the day that some nutcase adheres to a certain timeline? And don't tell me that Vladimir Putin isn't tied into the same kind of dark BS that Obama is. He comes from the KGB. Why would you not distrust? The, why would you distrust the CIA but trust a K, KGB agent? We know who Putin is. We clearly know who Obama is. Some nutcase wants to set off a nuclear weapon while you're at work today. How's that sound? Um, does it matter what religion you are, friends? There are some seriously messed up things happening. And if you're watching this video a year from now and nothing has happened, does that make any of the evil reported on here any less? How do you think these women that got raped in Germany are going to feel a year from now, even if there's no God? So it matters, people. It matters. Atheists force Jesus out of public school. Isn't that interesting? Because you you have, and I'm going to explain this real quick. The separation of church and state is to allow all religions to speak. It is not to silence religious speech. Do you understand that? Freedom of religion is stops the government from endorsing a religion, making you have a religion. It does not protect you from proclaiming your beliefs anywhere you want to. Now, I'm not saying you're allowed to talk through a movie. You know what I mean. You're allowed to say it wherever you want. To, turn, to do what they're doing here is the exact opposite of what the law is to do. It is saying that you are allowed to speak your religious faith in public. And it says that if you lead a prayer you want the people in the crowd are not forced to pray it with you. That is what it says. It does not say this. Kit Daniels, Infowars. An 